put your hands up if you love the PS1. guys Gemma here and back again for another video and today I'm acting on a semi request um, somebody asked me to show my like when are we gonna get an, a collection update video and to be honest the games room hasn't changed enough for me to do like a game tour so I figured being as I've shown you my entire PS3 PS4 and PS2 collection today I really want to focus on my PlayStation 1 game collection and I'm knocking around kind of maybe 200 games. It isn't massive and I know there are people that will be watching this video that will have an absolute ton more PlayStation 1 games than me. But I think I've got some really nice titles and I want to show you guys and I must say this right now. I get asked a lot what is my favourite console ever and it is the Super Nintendo. This piece right here, if you know me well, you'll know that this 16-bit console has plenty of kind of room in my heart loads of them actually, loads of kind of Super Nintendos um, on these shelves, but the PS1 is probably my second most favourite console of all time, um, hold very very dear to my heart in terms of nostalgia, my brother got one before I ever did, loads of stories to tell, some of them I've shared with you guys, so what I want you to do is to tell me, give me some games that I need to buy, give me some recommendations, um, by the time this video goes out I'll actually be at a retro gaming market so if, if I see some comments as I'm scrolling on recommendations I will look for them at the market but the video to that by the way will be dropping tomorrow so keep an eye out for it, it's going to be awesome. So guys I'm going to keep them on the shelves, I think it was a bit more organic, you can see them in their natural habitat so it's kind of you know part of the games room so let's take a look. Um, first lot are in alphabetical order, other side, can't be bothered, but let's take a look. So first couple of rows then, um, we're going to show you the other side, don't worry we're going to get close ups as well, there are some more down here which we're going to go into, and we're going to talk about some of my favourite titles. Now, I did originally, I was quite a big fan of alphabetising at one point, but then I gave up because as I was buying new games, there, were, there was no room on these shelves to put in brand new games, unfortunately. Now, you're probably thinking there are some staple titles missing, but again, the side that I'm about to show you is where all of the awesome titles are, so keep an eye out later on this video. Now, I want to tell you about this game. This is probably, well, this is actually my favourite game on the PlayStation 1. Pretty basic stuff, but it is a top-down puzzle game. I highly recommend it. It is also available on the Saturn, which I think I own somewhere down here. Um, but nonetheless, I first played it on the PS1 with my friend Gareth. Um, his family played through it. Real good family game. Great if you've got kids. Highly recommend it. I'm just going to put it up there. I'm not even going to put it back. I'll do it after the video. Yes, three copies of Croc, some of which are broken. One is platinum. And you cannot go wrong with a little bit of Die Hard Trilogy. Now, we know that this is a three-in-one game. Um, my favourite is the Nakatomi campaign, uh, the Nakatomi Plaza. We're all familiar with the film. We should then know that that's a huge skyscraper in the game. And obviously your objective is to rescue hostages and such like. Ton of fun. Highly skill-based though, but it's quite difficult in places. Um, so again, Dragon Ball, Final Bank, you don't see around much. And Exhumed is another classic. Um, if you think Doom in Ancient Egypt, you'll probably have a decent idea of what to expect from Exhumed. You can also get this on the Saturn if you don't have a PlayStation 1, if you're more of a Sega uh, fan in the 32-bit era. Then definitely snag yourself a copy of Exhumed. Highly, highly recommended. Final Doom lurking there, you will see a copy of the original Doom later on. Just scanning down. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. I really do like to hear from you guys. Oh my god, Legacy of Pain, unbelievable. This is a bit of a dodgy case, it might look a bit dodgy on camera because it's the holographic case, uh, but again, can't go wrong with that. Now Looney Tunes Racing, I've not actually played some of these. Matt Hoffman, I think one of them is broken. Um, but Mortal Kombat 3, picked that up for about £3 from an expo. Really, really great bargain there, absolutely mint. 
Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. Again, platinum. You can tell by the uh, the grey case and the grey strip along the bottom right here. But I don't care. I can still play the game. So I don't. What do you guys think about platinum cases over black label? Does it actually matter to you? Okay. So again, before we go over to the other side, there's a couple more games down here. Um, Street Skater is an amazing game. I think I've spoken about this. I can't actually pull it out. It's that tightly wedged in between the Saturn games. Great game is uh, Street Skater, an elaborate Tony Hawk, so I would probably describe it as a ton of fun, um, especially on two player mode as well. Some classic V Rally we got there. Vegas Casino, come on, I know we've got loads of fans of Vegas Casino, guys. Come on now, let's, let's own up in the comments. Uh, but yeah, this is my kind of first section of the PlayStation 1 stuff. I'm going to show you guys other stuff over the other side of the room right now where some of the cream of the crop is, including a signed copy of Tomb Raider. Keep an eye out, let's take a look. So this is the second shelf. Um, I think there's about eight, just over 85 games on here. Starting with the top left, we've got some cool Final Fantasy stuff. Seven, eight and nine, staple titles. These three are NTSC, seven, eight and nine here, followed by the PAL stuff. Um, I think, yeah, this is a platinum version on the Final Fantasy 7 but that's okay. I'll eventually get a black label. Um, yeah, because I mean I don't mind. You can play the game nonetheless anyway. So love this artwork by the way. Really, really enjoyed a bit of Destruction Derby. Two as well as one here as you guys can see is two here, pretty obvious. Um, not a massive fan of Destruction Derby Raw though. Um, but nonetheless it's just good to have. You will see it very shortly if you if you keep your eyes peeled guys. Uh, Fear Effect 2 you saw on a recent pickups video and then just kind of scanning across. I love this. Case is slightly battered though. Case is a little bit, seen better days let's just think. Um, but the Bomberman series I think as a whole is pretty pretty solid and I'm definitely looking forward to playing Bomberman on the Switch next week. Now just going to quickly show you this random thing lurking at the top of my PlayStation 1 games. Uh, a Ooh, a YouTube subscriber sent me this actually. I'm Jill Valentine on the Nintendo GameCube, the Gebs 24. Slightly random, but that does live up there. I'm kind of out of space, really. Uh, Fighting Force. If you've not, you, I think most people are familiar with Fighting Force. If you think like a 3D Streets of Rage, um, you pretty much nail Fighting Force. It's pretty, pretty solid game. The second one is absolutely crap. It's crap on the Dreamcast as well. Um, yeah, Porsche Challenge, where are we here? This was a game that my brother and I first played alongside the International Superstar Soccer that you guys saw a minute ago, as well as Crash Bandicoot, which believe it or not, don't think I have it. I actually don't have it. So that is a bit of a letdown. Classic, classic Doom. I'm gonna show you something uber cool in a second. Um, you guys can see, without me just kinda getting the light out of the way, um, it is unfortunately the classics version, but again, it doesn't matter because I can still play it. Really good port, actually. Really, really good port. And we just mentioned Fight Force 2. This is a crap, crap version of it. So this is probably the cream of the PlayStation 1 collection. This is signed by all of the development team from Core Design. Back in the day, you can see the old logo for Core right there. Um, got this signed at the Play Expo in 2016. Pretty gnarly stuff, and like I said, one of the best pieces in the collection. Uh, the disc is scratched to hell on this, but I just wanted it purely because it was the original um, double case that I first had uh, when it originally came out. So I was super, super stoked. Um, very friendly bunch, and I think there is a video that I'll link in the cards if you want to watch the first almost 50 minutes of the interview that I sat through and watched from the Play Expo. So be sure to check it out in the cards. So there we go guys, hope you enjoyed that video um, and again I am eager to see your comments in the section below, recommendations, tell me if there are any games that I'm kind of missing, there's some very obvious titles in there as you guys saw, all the final, well the main kind of Final Fantasies, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and on NTSC, 7, 8 and 9, uh, somebody actually gave me 7, 8 and 9 on when I went to America so um, that's like super duper awesome, um, really really nice community. Um, so yeah, let me know, got your Resident Evils in there, I think I need to get the non-platinum uh, version of Resident Evil 1, because my, my version is platinum, 
Um, so I'm a bit of a snob when it comes down to things like that. And obviously you saw my Tomb Raider, the cream of the crop, the prime game in my PS1 collection, the Tomb Raider signed by the original core, uh, core team um, back from the old core days in Derby when Tomb Raider was developed in my birth city. So that was super cool. Um, so guys, thank you very much. Please hit like if you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you want to keep in touch with more retro game goodness coming up. Um, thanks for tuning in guys. My name's Gemma. Have a beautiful day. See you soon. Thank you.